Testing, 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 testing. Hey everyone, I'm Deanna and I've officially been a project manager for one year. I was hired as the project manager of development for the Mariah Group on September 1st, 2022. Some of you may already know, but for those of you that don't, this was my first time ever holding the title of project manager, so everything was mad new and mad fresh for me. As a newbie, I wanted to take the time to share with you guys what I've learned over the last year. Today, we'll be discussing exploring industry choice, project management style, the importance of cross-functionality, establishment of a project management system, making a professional development plan, and the do's and don'ts of being a first-time project manager. Section one, let's talk about industry choice and selecting the right path. When I think about my role as a project manager over the last year, I kind of have to take a further step back. Before I came to the Mariah Group, I had spent the last four years operating as a grant consultant turned manager of grants and development for two different nonprofit organizations. This experience allowed me to develop a much deeper understanding of the industry, um, create pathways to overcome challenges that I would face, and allowed me to create the stepping stones to my growth as well. Interestingly, I, as I said, I didn't seek a role in project management. Rather, it was presented to me as an opportunity, and I decided to take advantage of that. Ah. Uh... That's crazy. My passion for grant proposal and development work, the mission of the Mariah Group, and the skill enhancement that I would receive if I were to step into this role were why that I took on this opportunity and became a project manager. I believed in the impact that they were making, and when the idea of transitioning into project management was presented to me, it became very clear to me that this path would allow me to contribute to our mission in a different but still very meaningful way. This transition wasn't just about a job title. It was about alignment with my skills, my interests, and career goals within my chosen industry. It was about leveraging my passion for grant and development work and combining that with the management skills necessary for project success. The benefits presented to me show that I could have a meaningful but unique impact within an industry that I've already grown to love and have already been thriving in. This alignment gave me me a much more competitive edge and has allowed me to provide even more value to the organization I work full-time for and the organizations that I consult with. Taking on this role was a strategic decision that in hindsight has continued to enrich my career. Section two is your project management style and defining your approach. I've grown to learn that project management styles comes in various forms and each one has its own unique approach. Ones that you might have heard of are agile, waterfall, and hybrid mythologies. I'm really looking at my script and I've been binge watching Kitchen Nightmares. A lot of this is going to be food and kitchen related. (laughs) These three mythologies are essentially different flavors and ways in which project management can be approached. But let's break it down into simpler terms. Think of these project management styles as like different recipes for how to cook a meal. An agile approach is like a simple stir fry. You know, let's say a shrimp stir fry, all the veggies and stuff, right? While waterfall is a much more meticulously planned three course meal. And of course, hybrid is a combination of the two. In my case, my project management style leans more more towards the agile side. I value adaptability, collaboration, and continuous improvement. I prefer to break down complex tasks into much smaller manageable pieces, just like if you were taking the time to measure out one ingredient at a time in a recipe. With this approach, I'm able to do much quicker adjustments when needed, which is very, very crucial within this dynamic industry. And honestly, within any industry. However, even though I lean more towards the agile side, over the year, my style has definitely changed significantly. 
As I said, because I was new in this realm, not true to this realm, I stepped into it with a fairly rigid approach, a keen to following a recipe step by step. As I got much more comfortable with being a project manager and just understanding how my department and the other departments within my company works, I began just adapting different tactics and techniques to make just workflow much easier. For example, I've been doing things like color coordinating our different tasks, timelines, and required, let's say, ingredients for each task at hand, which is like, you know, similar to having various spices and such in the kitchen, because not every recipe or every project will call for the same spices. I also started doing something that I like to call universally adaptable deadlines. Think of this as adjusting cooking times depending on the appliance being used. So while sometimes I'm able to pop something in the air fryer for like 10 minutes, sometimes I have to slow down a little bit and put something in the oven for like 45. You feel me? This adjustment ultimately made it easier for my team and the teams of other departments to work collectively and collaboratively much more efficiently. Additionally, I always make sure to have regular check-ins and feedback sessions, which is kind of like tasting and adjusting your seasoning in your food as you cook. When accordance with my project management style, it allows me to continuously and efficiently have progress and improvement throughout the course of any project. Section three, we're going to talk about the importance of cross-functionality and collaborating for success. Within project management, think of cross-functional teams as like the secret sauce to kind of bring everything together and have it marinate seamlessly. Each team or department is filled with individuals with different backgrounds and diverse experiences where they are all bringing different ingredients to the kitchen, which are all necessary and when combined make a much better dish. You may be thinking if they're not a part of my team or a part of my department, why is this important? It is because just like a well-rounded meal is satisfying, a well-rounded cross-functional team will ensure a well-rounded successful project. They foster creativity, innovation, and problem solving by bringing in different perspectives. It's like having a variety of spices to enhance all the flavors in your dish. Because usually if you miss in that one thing, the dish ain't the same. And you want all of your meals to be a flavorful experience. So for example, my team was designated responsible for our social media giving campaign last year. We were responsible for crafting a overall message for the campaign. In addition to managing the project itself, coming up with like, you know, a lot of the graphics and videos and content that was used for the campaign. However, my team is new to the organization and we understood the importance of collaboration to make sure that our message was clear clear and being conveyed to our audience correctly. So we connected with our communications team. They acted as our partners in the kitchen. And it was as if my team were the chefs creating the meal and the comms team were the, I'm not going to say this correctly, sommeliers. They were the sommeliers selecting like the perfect wine, you know, wine tasters. I just like that fancy word, but they were the ones who were selecting the perfect wine to pair with the meal. The communications team was able to give us substantial feedback. They were able to give us guidance when creating the visual content and captions for our campaign. They made sure that our message was not just well-crafted, but also visually appealing. It was also something that deeply resonated with our audience and they just further shared our mission. Section four is establishing a project management style, which will be the foundation for success. Now let's talk about the backbone of successful project management, which is your project management system or PMS. Think of PMS as a recipe book, which has all your ingredients, instructions, and cooking techniques in order for you to create a successful meal or in this instance, project. This will be your structured approach to plan, execute, and control all your projects effectively. A well-structured PMS typically includes critical elements like project goals and objectives, clear timelines, defined roles and responsibilities, 
budget management, risk assessment, and communication protocols. It's literally like having a very detailed recipe with all the steps and stuff and exact measurements that you need listed out. A well-structured PMS streamlines project processes, making them much more efficient. Just like Gordon Ramsay, and he knows when you're supposed to add ingredients to the pot when you're making a dish, a well-defined system ensures that all tasks are carried out and added in the right sequence. Moreover, a robust PMS enhances communication within the team. Think of it like a well-orchestrated kitchen where everyone knows their role and they can seamlessly coordinate amongst each other. This also minimizes any misunderstandings, any delays, and any errors. Lastly, a PMS allows for better monitoring and tracking through the progress of any of your projects. It's kind of like using a timer to ensure that your dish is cooked to perfection. You don't want anything undercooked and you don't want anything overcooked either. You want it just right. With a structured system, you can identify any problems early on and address them, ultimately making the progress and process of projects that much smoother. Section five, and I hope you already have started this, is making a professional development plan and investing in your growth. To switch up the scenarios here, imagine you are a gardener and you are in charge to tending to a beautiful garden. Without a plan for how you're going to care for these flowers, they may look beautiful now. However, the roots don't seem to be flourishing as well as they could. And you see that the flowers are not thriving to their fullest potential. Your professional development plan works with you in the same exact way. Your professional development plan is literally a blueprint for your blossoming and growth. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but creating and following a professional development plan is critical for anybody's success in any industry. But I would say especially in project management. This will act as a roadmap guiding you along to how you want to grow within your career. It'll allow you to set much clearer and better goals for you to follow along this path as well. And as you continue to grow, you want to make sure that you are working smarter, not harder. You are making sure to properly tend to each plant in your garden, making sure that you're not accidentally giving to one area more than the other and watching them bloom. So watching yourself bloom. If you want to create or enhance your professional development plan, there are several key factors when creating. One. First, you're going to identify your career goals and where you want to be in the future. Just as a gardener will decide what flowers they want to plant, you need to envision what seeds that you need to plant in order to reach your career destination. Next is to assess your current skills and competencies. Determine what it is that you need to do or improve upon in order to reach those goals. As the gardener, this is like checking your soil and your roots to see what it is that they still need in order to solidify and grow. Next, you're going to outline the specific actions you'll take to acquire those skills or experiences. This is like planning how and when you'll water and care for your garden. For myself, following a career plan has been transformative because I wasn't always doing that. It has allowed me now to set my sights on really becoming a proficient and more efficient project manager. And it has thus far guided me to acquire the necessary skills and knowledge that because I did not have experience as a project manager, I was able to grow and have them now. Just like a well-tended to garden, my career has continued to flourish because of deliberate planning and execution. Overall, Having a professional development plan just makes you that much more accountable for your actions in your career. It ensures that you stay on track, that you continue to water your garden, that you make sure that you are taking the necessary steps to keep your soil good and refreshed, and it allows you to 
keep pushing forward to having a flourishing career. Now let's dive into the do's and don'ts of being a first time project manager. First up, we're gonna talk about the do's and success strategies for new project managers. First, I want you to make sure that you are setting clear objectives. Setting clear objectives is like plugging in an address to your GPS. It gives your project direction and purpose. Without any clear objectives, that's like just telling your GPS to go with it, where you're just wandering around aimlessly, wondering why things are incomplete and wondering why you're not able to get the task done. It's because no directions were given and the address is unclear. You never ever wanna embark on a road trip or a project without knowing the destination at hand. So set clear objectives. In my old role, originally I wasn't provided with any objectives or metrics for success. So I kind of felt like I was just shooting darts in the dark. However, myself and other people on my team decided to take matters into our own hands and we created our own objectives to carry with us throughout the year. And once we were giving a new manager who further contributed to these metrics and just gave us much more clarity of the mark we were to hit by the end of the year, it just made everything so much better. Ultimately, I was able to create a track record of my success within the organization having these objectives to follow. Like they became my guiding stars in a sense. And without them, it would just look like I'm again, working harder, not smarter. Do number two is effective communication. I kid you not, communication, Correction, effective communication is the lifeblood of any project in any industry. As a project manager, you're not just communicating with your team or even just other departments within your company or organization, but you are also making sure to communicate with stakeholders and other external partners as well. Being able to convey ideas, actively listen, and provide feedback are essential. It ensures that everyone is on the same page and remains on the same page and further and eliminates any disturbances in the future, which we all know that miscommunication can extremely derail a project. If you're trying to enhance communication amongst your team, first, establish regular check-ins and status updates to keep everyone informed. Two, create an open and safe environment for team members to share their thoughts and concerns. Three, leverage collaboration tools and apps to streamline communication like Slack for quick checks or Trello for project tracking. And finally, make sure to actively practice listening. I found that some of the best solutions to my problems have literally just come from listening to my teammates and being a good listener can really make all the difference. Number three is time management. Time management is definitely the cornerstone of successful project management. If there's anything that you are maintaining as a project manager are project deadlines. And if you are managing your time well, that means you always gonna hit your deadlines on time. Time management also allows you to allocate your resources effectively and to make sure that there's no bottlenecking going on and nothing is hindered as a result of bad time management. One technique that I've found useful and you've probably heard of it before is the Pomodoro technique. This technique involves working in focused timed intervals, usually about 20 to 25 minutes and it's followed by a short break. And short break, literally no more than five minutes. You can just use a timer, but they do have apps like Focus Booster to help you properly utilize this technique. And lastly, what will help even more tremendously with your time management is making sure that you have a project management software. I am a huge advocate for monday.com, but other systems like Trello or Asana also are great project management softwares. A project management software will allow you to plan out your task and allocate time for them accordingly. Also, 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 first and foremost, do not forget, do not forget to schedule some downtime for yourself. Schedule a lunch, schedule time to just breathe, meditate, whatever the case may be. If you do not give time to yourself and manage your own personal time, you will self-destruct. I'm just telling you now. 
Gordon Ramsay is not in the kitchen or in his restaurants every single day. So you also don't got to be in the kitchen every single day. Take the time to make sure you recharge and reboost your creativity and your working flow. Number four is adaptability. For any project manager in any industry, flexibility will become a part of your definition. If there's anything that you are expected to deal with, it's unexpected challenges. And making sure that your style of managing is adaptable and flexible will allow you to overcome these challenges. That means you have backup plans, that means that you are open to change and you are a listener, and that you are finding creative solutions when things go off course. And ultimately, oh, I remember when I worked for a smaller nonprofit organization and they were not allocated as much money as they thought they were going to get. So we suffered extreme budget cuts. However, instead of panicking and losing our minds, we took the time, took a deep breath and just relocated some of our resources and adapted to this unexpected change and challenge. This level of adaptability and flexibility not only allowed us to continue operating, but also allowed us to work in a much more efficient manner and arrange our budget in a way that we didn't know was possible. This is a reminder that adaptability can change challenges into opportunities. Do number five is again to reiterate, Make a professional development plan. Just like Gordon Ramsay is always in the kitchen, refining and improving upon his skills, you need to do the same thing and that's gonna be done through your development plan. As a project manager, you should know that you are never going to stop learning and that your professional development plan will be your recipe for success. The professional landscape is literally always evolving and if you don't take the time to create a plan of growth and remain stagnant that will literally hinder your success your development plan will help you own new skills it will help direct you to any certifications or classes or courses that you may need to take to get to your next level and ultimately it helps you stay ahead in industry trends who don't want to be ahead of the game you stay ready so you don't gotta get ready my approach is to make clear, achievable, and constructive goals for each quarter of the year. I take the time to identify all my areas of growth and what I need to do to get there, what classes or certifications or degrees that I may need to acquire to level up. And tools like LinkedIn Learning or Coursera have been invaluable to developing these skills that are new to me or need to be refreshed. I also make sure to have a network of colleagues and of mentors who will not act only act as a guiding force, but also my motivators as I continue to grow. Remember, again, your professional development plan will be your path to growth and success. Now that we talked about the do's, let's talk about the don'ts and avoiding common pitfalls. Don't number one is micromanagement. Micromanaging is like hovering over a cook while they're trying to make a meal. It not only stifles creativity, but it also demotivates your team. When you're micromanaging, you're essentially telling your teammate, I don't trust that you are going to do the task at hand that I gave to you correctly, so I have to stay on your ass until I see that it's done. And who wants that? This will lead to frustration. It will decrease morale. And overall, it will reduce productivity. And as a project manager, the main thing that you want to do is remain productive. I'm pretty sure no one is uncommon to being in situations or being on a team where not everybody trusted you. And when that happened to me, it not only hindered my work, but it also took a stab at my self-confidence. I did not believe in my ability to do the work, even though I was hired for the position because I was being micromanaged. But now, luckily, I am in a space where I am trusted and I am empowered to do the work that I have been hired for. And I am just watching how much more successful 
the flow and progression of each project is moving because of this level of trust. So don't micromanage. Second don't is don't neglect stakeholder engagement. Stakeholders are going to act like the VIP guests at your restaurant. Ignoring their needs and their expectations is like taking a order and disregarding any of the preferences or allergies that they stated to you in regards to their meal. Successfully engaging stakeholders is crucial to any project because typically they are a key element to your project's success. Their input and feedback will literally be the guiding force to make sure that your project is staying aligned to all goals and tasks at hand. Neglecting stakeholders can lead to misalignment, can create dissatisfaction, and ultimately project failure. And we don't want no failure. I've literally seen firsthand how neglecting stakeholders and external partners can be very detrimental. For example, I ain't gonna go into too much detail, but a prior individual I worked with, he was neglectful for a lot of the data and the metrics that we had to create. And this ultimately led in us losing a huge chunk of funding. They did not take the time to see what it is exactly that the stakeholder required. And as a result, we suffered. So engage your stakeholders now to prevent suffering in the future. Don't number three, just like I don't want you to neglect your stakeholders, don't neglect team collaboration. As we said before, teamwork is the secret sauce that will seamlessly blend everything together within a project. Neglecting team collaboration is like trying to put together a symphony and all your musicians want to start on their own count. It is vital that you emphasize teamwork because 11 times out of 10, no project is done solo. Team collaboration just makes your job and everybody else's job easier. It is an effort to harness everyone's collective skills just so the project comes out that much better. And it is utilizing and enhancing the creativity of all your team members, which ultimately is a better outcome for your projects. One recent example that I can provide is my team and I collaborating to get a federal level grant completed. For those of you who have not worked on federal level grants, they are hard as hell, they are super complex, and they are lengthy. I literally probably would have lost my mind if I had to work on this grant application alone. Collaborating with my team not just made my life much easier, but I was able to just much more efficiently and effectively get this done, get this grant done in a timely manner, have more than just my eyes reviewing and editing and proofreading it. And it just made our application that much more competitive. And I love being able to take a breath while doing work. So there's that. Don't number four is don't avoid feedback. In any new role and particularly for me in this role, constructive feedback has been monumental in my growth and without it shorty would have been lacking i think i've said it before but feedback is like tasting food as you go it is a way to ensure that your project is on and remains on the right track and to make sure that it is continuously improving as project managers we should be actively seeking feedback from our team our stakeholders, our partners, anyone involved in the project, we should be getting some kind of information on how we doing from them. Lastly, don't number five is don't neglect establishing a project management system. I know we talked about making one before, but I wanna make sure that you really go and take the time to make one. Your PMS is going to make sure that you have a recipe book for your project management that stays consistent and successful. Neglecting to establish some sort of system is is like cooking without a recipe. Sometimes it might come out really good, but then other times you may be missing a few things. All of those elements are needed to make sure that your project management system is smooth, steady, and remains in efficient action. In conclusion, project management, like I said, is like creating a pop-in gourmet meal. It requires clear objectives, teamwork, and the right ingredients to put together the right recipe for the project. Make sure to embrace the do's, make sure you avoid the don'ts, and 
I'm pretty sure you'll be a successful project manager. All right, I've been chatting for a minute, so thank you for staying tuned. If you aren't already, please subscribe, like, and share this video. And until next time, bye.